Well, hello folks, long time no see, and um, I'm temporarily let out. I'm on holiday and uh, up in the west of Scotland for a week and couldn't resist the opportunity to just find an evening to come out and shoot, shoot a little bit of sunset action. And uh, things are just beginning to happen. Not absolutely certain that we'll get good color in the sky, but do you know what? I'm out here and uh, and I'm just having a bit of fun and um, yeah now I'm gonna show you what is behind me so I'm just gonna turn this sorry in front of me turn this around a moment and um, you might recognize this uh, this is the bridge from the very famous bridge that millions of people have photographed now which is the Harry Potter steam train bridge at uh, Glen Finnan uh, in the Highlands and then as we go down to sweep around to the left uh, then we see this beautiful lock and uh, and then a little bit of uh, sun just coming in off the shoulder behind that mountain um, over there which is just gorgeous so I want to try and get that while I can uh, in the meantime I'm just testing how this microphone system is really gusty and windy up here uh, but I hope that's not going to affect the sound too much. I've got a wind muff on my mic and it's hidden away underneath my clothing. Hopefully that's enough to keep things a little bit quiet. Catch you in a moment. So actually it's getting a bit chilly and uh, so I'm glad I brought some warm weather gear with me tonight. Uh, and, um, anyway well, I thought I might just um, give you a bit of a rundown on um, my experiences with the Sony RX10 Mark IV and how I'm getting on with it. This will be a little bit random um, but I'm just going to cover some of the main issues that I found and give an honest opinion of the degree to which I'm happy that I swapped out from all of my Nikon gear and into the Sony system. So first of all let's just look at the convenience factor. Um, I'm on holiday now in west of Scotland as I said and the amount of gear that I've had to bring with me is massively less than it used to be and it's a lot lighter so I haven't got to worry now about well how many lenses do have out of my stable of six or seven that I had uh, do I bring with me uh, not just on the whole holiday trip but on any given shoot so now it's actually a matter of well what cameras do I take with me instead uh, do I take the Sony RX10 Mark IV? Do I take the Sony uh, RX100 uh, Mark V? Uh, do I take the GoPro Hero 7? Uh, or do I take all of them? And um, at least two of those are small enough, uh, the GoPro and the, uh, the RX100, um, for them to not be massively consequential in terms of decision. So the first point, I suppose, is that portability is hugely improved. Things are just so much more portable than they used to be. And I no longer have that worry about what lenses to bring. Um, but what about performance? Well, I'm just gonna probably touch on two or three things um, that affect the kind of photography that I do. So, so I'm into landscapes and um, all this fast focusing stuff, not massively important for me and all the fast frame, frame rates that both of those uh, Sony cameras can do, again, not hugely important uh, for me. I don't really need to shoot at 24 frames per second. To be honest, I don't need to shoot at five frames uh, per second. Um, very occasionally, I'll use a higher frame rate. Uh, if I'm uh, taking um, a group portrait, for example, and, um, and I just want to avoid those moments where you know, I miss a good shot because one or two people blinked at just the wrong, the wrong moment. But apart from that, don't really use the uh, these super fast frame rates that the Sony's have. Um, low light performance, that's definitely uh, an issue. And um, it's certainly been an issue when it comes to event photography. Uh, when I'm, you know, going to concerts, that kind of stuff, and I want to take uh, photographs in low light, um, the Nikon D800 and the 7100, to, to be honest, will beat the beat the Sony RX10 uh, or RX100 
hands down, absolutely eat it for breakfast in terms of low light performance. That's just my experience uh, of it. Um, the other major issue that I've had uh, is with regard to um, apertures really and what are the real apertures of these these cameras when it comes to uh, the box you get and the depth of field that you get uh, because although the RX100 is an f1.8 lens and the RX10 is an f2.8 lens um, you don't really get that in terms of real world uh, performance when it comes to uh, depth of field you, you uh, actually who is it um, Chelsea and Tony Northrup have done a good video about about um, about apertures on the uh, smaller crop factor cameras and on the Sony you really need to multiply those aperture values by about 2.7 to get the equivalent 35 millimeter uh, aperture uh, behavior if you like and so although I've got an f1.8 on the RX100 Mark V, that does not give me f1.8 low light performance uh, when, for example, shooting stars. So I do a fair bit of, I like to do a bit of astrophotography and I have found that I have just not been able to get the kind of performance that I want uh, on a single shot. And so what I've had to do instead uh, is take multiple shots, maybe 10, 15 shots, and use Starry uh, Landscape Stacker or Starry Sky Stacker, something like that, um, in order to blend a whole bunch of photographs together uh, in order to reduce the noise in the shot. So that introduces extra work to do. Um, it also means that I cannot effectively do um, starscapes in terms of time lapses, a sort of time lapse starscape like I used to, uh, because I've just there's just too much noise uh, in the image, and um, and I'm not getting um, clear enough. I'm not getting enough light in to make the Milky Way as vivid on a time lapse uh, shot as I really want. So that's an honest thing. But having said that, the advantages of these cameras are huge uh, in terms of their video capability and um, image sharpness. I haven't got to worry about getting uh, dust on my sensor, that kind of stuff. I haven't got to worry about the lenses uh, that I carry around. Uh, and I'm still able to use the kind of filters that I like to. Uh, the one final thing that I think I will mention uh, is having an electronic viewfinder. Um, I've got to be honest, give me an optical viewfinder any day and uh, and it will beat the electronic one hands down when it comes to viewing it in um, in bright weather as we've had here in Scotland this last uh, this last couple of days so there you go it's not a moan about this camera and it's not necessarily that I regret having made the decision that I did but I have had to adapt my photography because of the equipment that I'm now using I look forward to the day when maybe I'll be able to have both uh, a good camera system for doing astrophotography and, uh, and also keep the Sony system, uh, at least the RX10 Mark IV, uh, for doing the landscape stuff or for general purpose photography, holidays, that kind of stuff, travel photography, when I don't want to carry a whole bunch of gear around with me. Okay, enough waffling on for now. I've got to get on with this shoot, see how the sky is uh, starting to colour up uh, behind me, uh, maybe grab a bite to eat as well to keep myself uh, keep myself warm, and uh, and I'll let you know how this shoot goes. Okay, enough of all that stuff then about the um, about the Sony cameras. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of the setup uh, that I have uh, for this evening's picture, which is an unusual project for me. Normally, I'm out and about on landscape shoots, just finding loads of different stuff to shoot. Um, tonight I've come out to take one photograph, that's it, and uh, it's a photograph from this particular position and I'm just really hoping that the sky will do its thing and help make it work. Anyway, in the meantime, let's have a look at some of the equipment stuff. Here is a Sony RX10 Mark IV. I'm using a, um, a third-party um, remote 
shutter release uh, that connects in at the side here and um, what else can I tell you um, I've set up in manual mode um, I'm on I mean normally on a landscape I, I would probably be about f11 on the Nikon equipment but you'll notice on here I'm nowhere near that I'm on uh, currently f6.3 uh, as it shows on the uh, on that display there and um, uh, currently I am shooting uh, uh, bracketed so I'm taking three shots and I'm using the this is quite useful here actually this shirt kind of gives me a bit of a histogram of how the image is going to is is, is working out basically and um, and I'm going to deliberately overexpose to start with so that I can get the foreground so I'm going to shoot at a fifteenth of a second so I'm going to take so I'm going to take the first shot at one fifteenth of a second and then I'm going to take the next shot a whole stop down from that at a thirtieth of a second and then I'm going to take a final shot at a sixtieth of a second and then I'm going to take all of these shots together and blend them in Photoshop uh, to see how we how we do overall now there is a weird optical illusion in this photograph and I'm just going to show you uh, what we're looking at here with the GoPro um, this lock appears to be on a bit of a lean <laughs> uh, but as you will know uh, lakes and logs don't do that they don't actually lean sideways but it is an optical illusion and it's because of the way the bank slope and it kind of curves away a bit from the right and because I think of the way that the wind is kind of making lines in the lake so it's one of those odd things where to make the picture look right I might actually have to deliberately tilt it but there you go right the other thing I want to do here is to try a bit of a panorama uh, or panorama however you want to say it um, so I better get on with that I'm gonna to have to turn this off for a moment and uh, I'm gonna tilt the camera up and um, I've spent a bit of time leveling my tripod here as you can see on this uh, little bubble uh, level here and um, so I'm gonna try a little uh, a little bit of a panorama just so I've got a few more pixels to play with see you again in a minute folks so anyway here we are I'm just about to pack up in fact and um, sunset has faded to this kind of nasty grey really um, had a bit of fun playing around done some panoramas um, first ones I shot with the um, polarizer on which was a mistake didn't mean to do that so I had to reshoot those um, it's not easy to stitch together panoramas with a polarizer and um, the other thing uh, with panoramas is I also um, extended the focal length from about 24 I think to about 40 mil maybe 45 mil something like that uh, just means you get a bit less distortion and um, you do get quite a bit of pincushion uh, effect actually on this lens at its at its widest and uh, there isn't an automatic correction profile yet um, in Lightroom for this camera at least not that I've, I've found um, also uh, I did play around with uh, my um, two-stop soft graduated filter leaf filters and uh, that's a soft grad rather than a hard grad because of these uh, big sticky up pointy mountain things breaking the horizon um, but that just helps balance the sky and uh, and the foreground and um, so apart from that not a lot else to to say uh, it's not going to be a spectacular um, bunch of pictures uh, from here I, I'm really after one shot maybe two it's all from the same location and pretty much the same composition uh, which uh, as I said earlier is unusual for me I'm normally um, running about all over the place uh, trying to find different compositions but this was one very particular project in mind um, in the meantime it's you know however, however it comes out um, it's worthwhile just getting out and about and uh, and it keeps my skills uh, fresh it keeps me um, technically fresh as well in terms of doing the Lightroom and the Photoshop stuff uh, as well as handling the camera and because uh, it's just too easy to get rusty with all of that and, uh, and forget what you forget what you're doing so I hope you've enjoyed that enough rabbiting on for now 
Uh, I'll show you one or two other shots as well from my holiday here just for a bit of a laugh and uh, in the meantime if you've enjoyed it uh, please do like and subscribe and share and all those kinds of things and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.